Yeah. How cool would it be to live there? Oh, Ooh, yeah, who it. owns yeah. that? I don't know. You know what I'd like to say? I would like to live there and then summer in that place with the garden in the West Village. Oh, yeah. You know that house that has its own, <laughs> its own like lawn, the little tiny house? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We were, we were up until four in the morning last night getting the movie ready. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, my work is done here. I was fe I was feeling really nervous. Like, oh no! no. <laughs> Yesterday she wasn't nervous at all. No. Hmm. No, I, I I was really really nervous uh, until about five minutes ago, and now I kind of feel like I'm just gonna surrender. It all started a few years back when Sarah and I were uh, sort of filming our lives together, sort of haphazardly for fun, sort of uh, filming uh, kind of a home video of footage. Home video yeah. footage. And, um, and then we looked back about a year ago and thought we had something good to work with and um, kind of decided to make a movie out of it and framed it with um, interviews with model friends of mine and designers and photographers and... Um, and then we, get, we gave cameras to her friends, uh, to other models, and they kept uh, sort of chronicled their, their lives as models behind the scenes and spoken to the camera and sort of kept diaries to some extent about their day-to-day -day lives uh, in a sort of very personal way. Um, and we sort of jammed it all together somehow into 80 minutes and came up with something that somehow was admitted to this film festival. <laughs> As far as the modeling question, I would say think why you want to do it. It's a lot more empowering to be behind the camera than in front of it. I say into the camera, in front of the camera. Yeah, and, and then think <laughs> why you want to be a filmmaker because it's going to take a while to, to, to make it. You know, it's, it's a lot of hard work. A, a, lot, a lot goes on behind the scenes to even to get to something like this. Uh, you know, it's a lot of years, a lot of staying up till 5 in the morning editing. Um, but, but if you're passionate about it, it, yeah, it's just, it gets all worth it, yeah. Just about a day in the life of Jesse Swartzen, cruising through downtown Jacksonville, and uh, just living one day, trying to meet girls, and <laughs> roll a, around in skateboards. He's a former, he's a, a skateboarder who's passed his prime, and uh, he uh, he's just been dropped from his uh, skating sponsorship, and so now it's like he's a little, you know, He's not as good as he used to be. He's a little overweight. He's, a little, he's aging, and so it's like kind of, you know, what does this guy do now? John R was my first fashion show, so um, I support them in what they do, um, and I appreciate the fact that they showcase new talent. What are you, uh, what are you working on now, and how did winning Top Model help your career? Um, well, it was definitely a platform for me, and I've been able to branch out and do many things. I'm a spokesperson for this Playboy Love Is Not Abuse. Um, I've been, I, I'm an elite model, I do a lot of high fashion work now. How should I impress a girl I really like? Honestly, you got a, you got a lot of style right now, and um, I think that's very key to getting a girl. But as long as you can carry a swagger with that look. Oh, you carry a swagger? Yeah, you carry some swagger with it, and I think you're good for it. How about my shoes? Do shoes make the man? Shoes definitely make the man, especially they're clean. They definitely have to be clean. Oh yeah, you rock and I like the whole, I love Puma, I used to rock Puma all the time, like, and I would rock Puma before Nike, so. For my music, like stage costumes and makeup and making it larger than life, uh, it's just part of the way that I express myself and my music. It's almost like a cartoon. It's probably really influenced by when I, I did modeling before and I, I kind of studied the makeup artists and what they did with the girls and me. To me, when you look at these pictures of these really young, thin, naturally thin girls because they're so young, I mean, you're looking at people who are extremely vulnerable, really. They're not developed yet. I mean, intellectually, um, they're just, uh, they're children, you know? And um, it's, you know, the agencies are supposed to be taking care of them, and often they do, but, um, you know, ultimately, like, these are people who are too young to be responsible for themselves and just having, you know, some sort of uh, shadow of an agent, you know, supposedly taking care of them, it's not enough, as I think you saw in um, the footage of Katya, who, you know, at 17 got pregnant when she was all alone on the other side of the world and didn't even speak the same language. And so what do you think of the, the feature documentary? Um, I thought it was very important and it really opened my eyes uh, as someone who is in show business and mainly deals with filmmakers and actors and theater and all of, all of that side of entertainment is unionized and a, and a protects young people 
and it protects uh, grown-ups too. And this film, to me, besides being enter entertaining, it's eye-opening, and I would hope would start a movement uh, to try to uh, show all these designers and agencies and everything that seem to have carte blanche and can get away with anything that they uh, that there would be a movement toward some more protection and unionization or something that would protect everybody whether they're kids or grown-ups but it's a terribly exploitive industry oh, what do you think of the short Oh, the short was fun, and, and was wonderful to see Super 8. Hmm. I, I mean, there have been great advances in technology with HD and video and everything, but I've been around film for a long, long time, and to see Super 8, black and white, whoa! I, I mean, there is something about the grain, the texture of a film, which you can't get uh, unless you shoot in a certain medium. What did, what did you think of the feature? Um, I thought it was a great portrait of the modeling industry at in large, and it's really, it's really brave of her to, you know, actually step out and do something and say something. And I loved when somebody in the audience, he's like, actors have SAG and AFTRA and equity, and in modeling there is no union. And that's what I always talked about when I first got into modeling. I was like. So where's the regulation? <laughs> there isn't any, so it's you know it's cool that that was brought up. Oh, the short that was really really funny. It was it was adorable. Just you know watching a guy who just like kind of chases the girl. I don't know, it was really cute. And I have a, I have a soft spot for nerds and skateboards. Name is David Junior dot com.